Okay, hello everyone. It's time for Bandit level 13 to level 14. Uh, so in this one, the level goal is that the password for the next level is stored in Etsy slash Bandit Pass slash Bandit 14 and can only be read by user Bandit 14. For this level, you don't get the next password, but you get a private SSH key that can be used to log into the next level. Note localhost is a host name that refers to the machine you are working on. It gives us these commands, ssh, tailnet, nc, openssl, sclient and nmap, and some helpful reading material, ssh slash openssh slash keys, um, which looks like it's an Ubuntu um, article. Okay, so this is all about asymmetric uh, encryption essentially, and how that is used to identify yourself in um, over the ssh protocol. So for one I called this Etsy, um, that's just how I've heard it being pronounced before this folder, um, just in case you wonder why I said that. And and yeah, okay, so let's 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 talk about this. Now talking about uh, public key crypto cryptography and asymmetric um, cryptography in general is like way above my level um, I know the basics of it, I know how it works, um, but I wouldn't be able to explain it very well. However, I can try and sort of briefly um, explain how it's used in this particular level. Um, it's basically used instead of a password. So when you connect via SSH, you, we normally connect with a password, right? But you can use public key cryptography um, to identify yourself. Essentially, um, with public key cryptography or asymmetrical um, cryptography you get there's a public key and a private key now the private key is kept secret and the public key can be made public hence public and private uh, and essentially if you wish to con to to if anyone in the public wishes to communicate with th that particular person they can encrypt their message with the public key and the only key that will decrypt it is the private key. Um, similarly, if if the uh, private the person wants to send a message and be identified as that person, like as a a way of um, authenticating that that person is who they say they are, they can encrypt a message with their private key, and only the public key will decrypt it, sort of confirming the uh, the identity of the person who sent it, essentially. Um, and this can be used with SSH. So the server or the machine that you're logging onto can can hold the public uh, key under a sort of authorized keys directory or file. Um, and when you connect via SSH, you specify the private key. Uh, the the computers talk. They they sort of uh, verify that that you have the correct private key for that public key. And then they use that as a as a um, as a means of identifying you instead of a password. It's much much more secure than using a password. Uh, it's you know if you don't know about this sort of cryptography, it's what essentially makes you know encrypts all our credit card transactions, etc. It's 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 um, amazing. It's uh, you you need to read this SSH SSH and open SSH and and really dive deep. I think go Wikipedia articles and find loads whatever you can and and read up on it. But it's very interesting if you're into that sort of thing. And yeah, I I highly recommend reading more about it. Now, so that's that's essentially what we're going to use for this level, right? We need to find the private key so that when we try and connect Bandit 14, we have the correct private key we can specify that private key and the server will say yep you are who I think you should be and allow us access that's essentially what we're about to do so let's look on bandit 13 so we're bandit 13 and we ls as usual and we see ssh key dot private if we look at this key we have an rsa private key this being the private key here. Um, so we need that. That is what we're going to use to identify ourselves to log on to level 14. 
So the good old fashioned copy and paste. We're going to copy this and now we can't connect um, from well actually can we connect? I was about to log out and then connect via my computer but maybe well, I'm just going to do that maybe maybe you could connect directly from Bandit 13 I don't think you can but I'm going to try it after this and see uh, and I would suggest that you try it as well just to see if, if that works um, off the top of my head I'm not sure if it would or not but I'm going to exit um, so I'm back to my PC right and I can LS and I've got the usual folders um, and I'm going to save this ah no so I realize I've probably not done this on stream or on, on in a video I'm going to use echo echo is a command that you can you know it just outputs what you've uh, it echoes what you've put um, and I, I, I use that to save all the passwords at the end of each level uh, what I do is I echo the the password and I redirect the output to a to a um, you know like a bandit 13 dot pass file um, and that's what I'm going to do here so I'm going to say echo I'm going to paste that key I'm going to go right to the end and finish my speech marks just so that everything gets interpreted correctly and then I'm going to save that to private.key something like that and so as you can see I've redirected this to private.key so when I hit enter and hit ls I've now got this private.key file which I can oh which I can cat and make sure it looks right it looks right so that's great so we've got the key now we need to connect to level 14 and we need to specify that this is the key now we're going to connect with SSH so let's look at the man pages and see if there's a way to connect with SSH and with a public key or a private key sorry and here it is it's the, the I flag identity file select a file from which the identity private key for public key authentication is read it gives a default if you don't put anything um, but we're obviously going to specify that it's the file that I just saved so we're going to try and connect to bandit 14 so we're going to SSH into band, ooh, bandit 14 at bandit.labs over the wire Org. We're doing that on port 2220, and this time we have an identity file. That identity file is private.key. And just quickly check the command, all looks good to me. So we hit enter, and oh, warning unprotected private key file. Permission 0644 for private dock here to open. It is required that your private key files are not accessible by others. This private key will be ignored. Okay. So it doesn't like our key because it's saying that it's too it's not protected enough. The the permissions are too lax. Um, which we can remedy, so that's not not a big deal. Um, we can control and Z to sort of exit this SSH process because uh, we obviously don't know the password of bandit 14 and we can look at the permissions by looking at all of these um, private.key so it's got too many permissions right now these first three the owners permissions which is us it's got this read and it's got this read for for the group and for the um, for everyone, for the users. So we want to essentially get rid of them. Um, now the way we can do that is using the, I'm just going to control NL, is using the change mode, I guess, change mode command. Now the change mode uh, command lets us specify permissions for a file. It uses, um, you can do it sort of two different ways. The way I tend to use is numerical. Um, there's like you can add numerical permissions, uh, or you can do things like 
plus X to add executable permissions to a file. But what I'm going to do is use the numerical notation. Now, with the numerical notation, we use numbers from 0 to 7 to specify the specific permissions for each um, for each of the three different sort of user levels. So we're going to give it three numbers between 0 and 7. Uh, the first number is going to specify the permissions for the owner of the file. The second number is going to specify the permissions for the group of the file. And the third number is going to specify the permissions for the user of the file, or for any user of the file. Now the way that it works is that it uses powers, powers of two. So a number one corresponds to add execution, a number two corresponds to, to write um, permissions, and a number four corresponds to read permissions. Now if you want to add if you want to set read and write permissions, you take four and you plus two, so you would set that as six if you didn't want execution, executable permissions as well. Um, if you wanted all three, so read, write, and execute permissions for the owner, say, you would write a number seven, right? Because you would have read permissions as one, write permissions as an extra two, which brings us to three, and uh, read permissions is four brings us to seven. I hope that makes sense as a very brief overview but we're gonna gonna use this more and I'll go probably more into detail then uh, but for now we just know that as the owner we want all the permissions it doesn't need to have all the permissions but we might as well just do that and as for the the group and the users we want no permissions so we give them no permissions by putting specifying two zeros and we want that to be on our private dot key file hit enter, that's changed the permissions of that file now um, and then let's try connecting again to bandit 14 now that we've changed those permissions and we're straight in to bandit 14 uh, and now if we want the password we know that it's stored here so we can cat and see bandit pass and bandit 14 and there's the password in case you want to have the password for the for the login as well okay I realized that I went maybe a bit quick um, through some of the steps here uh, of course I know these videos are just for me really but if anyone does end up watching them and, and would would prefer me to go over something or whatever you of course you can just comment and I'll, I'll reply um, yeah, I hope that wasn't too too speedy. I hope that made sense. And great, I'll see you in uh, level 14 to 15.